Hello, beautiful souls. This is Isis. Today, let us continue our talks about letting go. Letting go to let in. There are three attachment styles. Clingy. Um, the second is aloof. And the third is giving and taking. So generally what, a, what takes is the aloof person will attract the clingy person. The clingy person will attract the aloof person. And round and round this goes and there is no good attachment style. Um, what is ideal is the one who gives and takes. That would be the ideal attachment style. But how can you reach that? And you don't have to be, be committed to one attachment style or another. You can transition through each attachment style. But how can you reach the ultimate attachment style? You see, if you don't need the other person, you just want to be a part of their lives, it's nice to have a friend, to have somebody who accepts the attachment style of giving and taking or receiving, however you want to uh, put that. But when somebody has the aloof attachment style, they don't understand the giving and receiving attachment style and they might walk away. And they might assume the clingy attachment style has taken place when that wasn't what took place in the first place. And the clingy attachment style will go well with the giving and the taking attachment style. Um, and they, they may or may not understand that uh, boundary. I think that they pretty much do. I depends on your age. Uh, if you're younger, you know, you might be more anxious. So that really comes from the household, the parents, or from a past relationship. Um, somebody hurt you a lot and they damaged your soul and you didn't let go of that you didn't give it a new meaning like this was a lesson for me what would that lesson be if somebody ripped out your heart and ate it and now you have become aloof what would be the lesson from that because you don't want to be 53 years old and trying to figure things out when there's somebody willing to work with you and you don't want to be aloof and incomplete but if you choose to be that's your choice maybe one day you'll look back and you'll remember that may not have been the best choice you thought it was a grand choice in the moment, but in the long term, maybe it wasn't the best choice. So when things are happening, look at it in this aspect. It's all happening for me, not it's happening to me. What a huge error we have designed within our minds to state, look at what's happening to me. No. Even if it's something shocking and kind of, for most people, would be very frightening. Um, big financial responsibilities taking over to such an extent that the average person would be in fear, anxiety, anxious. But it's better to just say it's happening for me. And Everything will take place because I trust 
in divine purpose and in divine right. And I am well aware that all things take place in its time, perfect timing. And there is never imperfect timing. All things are in perfect alignment as long as I see them with clarity and I take off my blinders and I look deeper and I say, how is this happening for me? So please review the way events are taking place and ask yourself, how is it happening for you? I hope you have a beautiful day.